what income stocks that are recession proof and investors could own them for life? Honestly, this is not an easy question to answer because today we are living in a world where business dynamic changes very fast. Just look at some 10 to 20 years ago, we have witnessed how Netflix and other streaming services killed traditional TV and cable business. Disruptive companies like Facebook, Instagram, Google have also killed newspaper and any players that couldn't keep up with the technological changes. So if I were to come up with a list of income stocks that are recession proof and not going to get disrupted by any technological changes, it's definitely not easy, especially if I want to own them for the rest of my life. But I think it's still possible. In this video, I'm going to share with you my personal picks. My name is Chris and I'm the co-founder of The Fifth Person. At Fifth Person, we want to help you to become a better investor. So after going through the library of stocks that I have analyzed in Singapore over the last decade, I have filtered out five income stocks that are recession-proof and I think they will still be around for a long time. Of course, if you still want to have a full list of income stocks that have been paying regular dividends over the last 10 years, I'm going to give it to you in the download link below and because there are eight more income stocks which I'm not covering this video, but you can find out what are these companies from the download link in the descriptions below. Anyway, let me start off with the list of five income stocks to own for life in Singapore. Number one, Raffles Medical Group. This is a company that owns well-known hospital in Singapore, Raffles Hospital. I'm sure you heard of it before. And next to the hospital, the building is called Raffles Specialist Center. This building is very easy to access from the Bugis train stations in Singapore. They also own medical centers in Holland V and they have also 80 over medical clinics across Singapore Island under the brand Raffles. This company was founded by Dr. Lu all the way back in 1976. They have been growing leaps and bounds since then. If you look at their hospital revenue, both inpatients and outpatient revenue have been growing at a double digit growth rate on a year to year basis ever since they officially opened Raffles Hospital back in 2001. And the other segments that they have is the healthcare services, which is about their revenue comes from the GP consultation. This segment has also been growing at a high single digit on a year-to-year -year basis. This is where if you are sick, you can go to Raffles Medical Clinics that is nearer to your place. The doctor will examine your condition and then prescribe the medicine for you at a good convenience. Right? So according to the company, they have consulted more than 2 million patients each year and about one third of them are foreign patients who come to Singapore to seek medical treatment. So if you look at the breakdown of the foreign patients, 20% of it actually comes from Indonesia, 6% come from Malaysia, and the rest comes from the rest of the world, which contribute about 74% of the entire foreign patients. And they also have a small segment where they collect rental income from their investment in the properties. So if they build the uh, Raffles Hospital, they can list out some of the space to the third party operators. And in this year, they can actually collect rental income. Because of its steady revenue across the business segment, this has allowed the company to pay very regular dividends ever since the company was admitted into the SGX main board. As you can see here, Raffles Medical has survived many crises in the past. We have SARS, we have September 11, we have 0809 crash, and this company continued to stay very resilient and they have been paying very stable dividends, in fact, growing dividends year after year. So this is the company that I think they will definitely go to stay relevant over the next 10 years to 20 years. Even though now we have telemedicine, in fact, it has actually picked up after the COVID-19. Uh, telemedicine is something where you can actually consult the doctor online, but there are certain consultation and certain procedures that you still need to go down to the site to carry out the uh, examination. So telemedicine, I believe, is something that can coexist with the hospital. Coming up next is this company called Hoppa Corp. You may not be familiar with this company, but I'm sure that you are familiar with this brand called Tiger Balm. Okay, so Tiger Balm is owned by Hoppa Corp. I have one over here. This is the magical cream that you apply on your body if you're experiencing some form of pain. Because this cream will somehow relieve the pain on your muscles. And if you're active in sports, I'm pretty sure that you have used Tiger Balm before. 
Okay, so you can even apply this cream on your chest, right? If you have a serious bad cough or flu. And over the last 100 years, many people have been using Tiger Balm to cure the pain, joint discomfort. So the brand has been a household name in Singapore, but it's no longer just a Singaporean brand. It has become a global brand and it is now sold in 100 over countries worldwide. You can find them easily in Watson, 7-Eleven, or even random store on the streets. When I was at the tourist spot in Singapore, like River Safari, I saw Tiger Balm was being displayed on the shelf. So it's very popular among the local as well as the tourists. In fact, a lot of tourists, uh, particularly from China, they have been uh, buying a lot of Tiger Balms from their distribution locations like Thailand, Hong Kong, and Singapore. So these tourists usually will include Tiger Balm as one of their mass buys when they visit these countries. Okay, so Tiger Balm also have other products like medicated plaster, mosquito repellent, muscle rub, neck and shoulder rub, all kind of products, right? So if we look at their sales, right, sales of Tiger Balm have been growing very well uh, since 2003 all the way to 2019 okay so, and if you look at their net profit it has also grown really well this revenue and net profit have been growing at a double digit growth rate on a year-to-year -year basis and if you look at the margins uh, you can see the Tiger Balm is making at a more than 20% margin to 30% margin on a year-to-year -year basis so it is a very profitable business and this has allowed them to pay very stable dividends since 1996. So you can see from their dividends over here, base dividends alone has been growing from about 7.5 cents all the way to about 30 cents in 2019. If I were to include the special dividends over here, occasionally Tiger Balm will still pay out special dividends in 2007, 2015, and 2018. As you and I exercise more, we will have more pains all over our body and we will buy more Tiger Balm. So Tiger Balm should continue to do well over the long run because no one know their secret formulations to make this magical cream. Just like Coca-Cola, Tiger Balm is very difficult to get copied, especially they already established a very strong brand in this area. But make no mistakes here, Hopa is not only made out of Tiger Balm, they also have their investment in both UOB and UOL, which have been paying a very steady dividends to Hopa Corp. They also have other segments, which is a small segment that are mainly made out of the leisure and office rental. So from these segments over here, obviously UOB is one of the biggest contributor, in fact the biggest contributor and we want to look at how stable the revenue or dividends that they are receiving from the UOB investment. This will bring us to the next three companies which you should be very familiar with, Singapore banks, UOB, OCBC and DBS. I think banks will continue to exist for a long time because banks are the backbone of any economy. They play a very important role when it comes to economic development of a country. If a local company wants to expand or investors want to buy a property, they need a lot of capital. So having a strong bank to support their investment activities is extremely crucial because it will create a lot of jobs along the way. So the whole country will become very prosperous. So it's the interest of the government to make sure banks are well regulated in Singapore in order for the entire economy to do well. So this has been very true in Singapore because all the top three banks in Singapore are very well managed over the last few decades. Singapore government has been very active in intervening the markets whenever they see a bubble forming. A good example would be the property market in Singapore. As you can see here in 1996, when the property prices started to go up at a very fast pace, the government will introduce certain cooling measures so that the property bubble would not burst, which would cause a lot of defaults. So in 1996, as an example, a government introduced a 100% gain on tax uh, if the investors sell the property within the year, but they quickly pull out this measure when the Asian financial crisis hit Asia in 1998. 
and then the market started to uh, go up and, but, and then came down due to the, the collapse of Lemon Brother and when it started to recover very quickly the government again comes in and introduces a lot of cooling measures in place like additional buyer stamp duty to make sure that property prices in Singapore remain affordable and stable. So because of all this, banks in Singapore generally do not suffer from huge default which is something that we have seen during the collapse of Lemon Brother in the US in the 0809 crisis. But this is not to say that there's no default at all in Singapore. There are still default in some years and in certain sectors like oil and gas, but it is manageable from the overall loan portfolio. And because of this, banks like UOB, they have been able to operate at a very profitable level and this has allowed them to continue to pay a very regular dividend since 1997 all the way to 2019. And in some years, they also pay out certain special dividends if the company can afford to, to do so. Right, so if you are income investors and you own bank stocks in Singapore, you will have received a very stable passive income, not just stable, but also growing on a year to year basis. Okay, the same thing for OCBC. OCBC has been paying a very stable dividend since 1997 from about 7.5 cents. This has increased all the way to more than 40 cents in 2019. And in some years, they also pay out certain special dividends if the management decide that they don't need this excess cash in their book. DBS also has been paying very stable dividends, although it is not as smooth as compared to UOB or CBC, but yeah, they will still be relevant over the next 10 to 20 years. There you have it, the five companies that are recession proof that I don't mind owning them for a lifetime. Let me quickly recap on these companies, Raffles Medical Group, Hoppa Corp, then the three banks in Singapore, UOB, OCBC, and DBS. So if you're interested to invest in any of the companies that I mentioned in this video, remember to do your own research before you buy them because in any investments, they are investment risks and you need to know them. Okay, you also need to know when is the best time to buy and when is the best time to sell. But if you're not sure and you want to learn how to create an income portfolio that is going to pay you six figure in annual dividends, I have created a special training webinar to show you how you can receive growing dividends year after year. So make sure you check out my free training at theincomestrategies.com. And before you go, let me know what are the top five recession proof income stocks that you want to own for life. Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this session, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next video.